Thomas S. Kuhn's The Structure of Scientific Revolutions is a key book in the philosophy of science that changes a lot about how we think about how science moves forward. In this work, Kuhn doesn't tell a linear story with characters and a plot. Instead, he gives a thought-provoking study of how science has changed over time, focusing on key ideas and events that change the way people think. Kuhn starts by questioning the common idea that science is the slow, orderly gathering of information. He suggests a new model in which scientific progress happens in revolutionary bursts within a framework of what he calls normal science, paradigm, anomalies, crisis, and scientific revolutions. Kuhn says that normal science is a time of scientific activity that is guided by a set of accepted theories and practices. This set is called a paradigm. Like Newtonian physics or Einstein's theory of relativity, these paradigms give scientists a shared understanding that helps them do research and figure out what the data means. In its normal state, science is a way to figure out how to solve problems within the current system. But Kuhn says that as long as scientists work within a paradigm, they will always find anomalies, which are observations that don't fit into the current framework. Most strange things get fixed, but some don't, causing a crisis in the science community. At this point, the scientific revolution starts to take shape. Kuhn says that a scientific revolution is a time of change when the old model is called into question and a new one is made. It's a big change in how scientists understand and explain the world. It's like a gestalt switch, where the way you look at a picture like a duck or a rabbit changes how you see it. One of Kuhn's examples is the change from the geocentric model of Ptolemy to the heliocentric model of Copernicus. Even though the geocentric model had more and more problems, it was still used until the problems became too big to fix, which led to a crisis. Copernicus's revolutionary heliocentric model, which finally became the new paradigm, helped to solve this problem. Kuhn also talks about how difficult it can be to change a paradigm. He says that people who are stuck in the old paradigm often find it hard to let go of their old ideas and beliefs. Kuhn says that a new group of scientists is often the reason why scientists accept a new paradigm. With this study, Kuhn makes two important points. First, he says that scientific growth is not a simple march toward the truth, but a complicated human process that is affected by social, psychological, and even aesthetic factors. Second, he stresses how important it is for scientists to think outside the box to move science forward. In the end, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions is a groundbreaking book that changes the way we think about science. Kuhn gives us a new way to look at scientific progress by pointing out that it doesn't happen in a straight line and that paradigms change. By showing how important anomalies, crises, and revolutions are, he pushes us to be open to uncertainty and the chance that science could change in a big way. This important book doesn't just change how we think about science, it also changes how we think about how we learn about and understand the world around us.